Hello, and welcome to Discovering True Health, your weekly deep dive into health and wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started with today's show, please hit the subscribe button below. It helps us out a lot, and you'll stay up to date on all our upcoming shows. You can also check out additional information on our website, Instagram, and Facebook. All those links are listed below in the description. So today in Discovering True Health, we are going to delve into the concept of hidden limiting beliefs, those unconscious thoughts and assumptions that can hold us back from achieving our goals and living our best life. So we'll be learning today how to identify these hidden limiting beliefs, and we're going to arm you with empowering tools to overcome them as well. So my guest joining me today is Carla Fernandez. She's a spiritual and transformational life coach, and she's also a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming and is certified in many other healing modalities and techniques. Carla is also co-author of You Have So Much Potential and Resilience Despite Rigor, and she is devoted to helping clients overcome the mental and emotional blocks that limit their joy and the pursuit of their passion. So thank you so much for joining me today, Carla. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. It's a pleasure being here. Looking forward to this conversation. It's such an important topic, and I think it's often very misunderstood. Um, I'd love to start first with hearing a little more about your journey, though. You had a really successful corporate career in finance and then decided to transition into the work you're doing now. Um, yeah. What was kind of the catalyst that caused that life shift? And what were some of the things and important lessons that you learned along the way? Yeah, thank you. Um, so really it starts, I mean, I think I can go back to an early age when um, I knew that I I was meant to be helping people and I knew that I was meant to create, you know, a, a big impact in the world. But you know, I didn't really have the resources and the tools at that stage of my life to really dive into what that looks like. And so, you know, you you follow the typical career path or the typical education path where, you know, you go from your elementary school to high school and then eventually into university. And you're sort of come out of university and you're left wondering what's next. What, what do I do next? And, you know, I studied something in university that I was really passionate about, but when I came out of school, I felt like it wasn't really leading to any opportunities that I could truly see myself, um, you know, feeling fulfilled and feeling um, like I was actually, you know, helping people in a big way. And so I spent some time sort of doing some soul seeking and searching, and I stumbled upon the idea of becoming an investment advisor. And, you know, I thought that um, this was great. I was, you know, doing something that um, sort of fit into the mold that society expected of me. I was doing, you know, a, a professional career. Um, I was making my parents proud because I worked at a bank and, you know, I had all of these, you know, typical securities that come from having, um, you know, a nice stable sort of career. But, you know, fast forward, maybe 10, about 10 years into my career, I started to feel like I needed more, I needed something that um, really created like uh, an impact and a change in people's lives. And though I, and even though I felt like helping people navigate the complexities of their finances and helping them save and helping them acquire more wealth or, you know, establish more wealth. I felt that that was doing some good. Absolutely. But it, it wasn't on that deeper level that I felt I needed to, to sort of help people with. And so, you know, I, it really took me some time to, to, to figure out <laughs> that I was no longer um, in alignment with that career path. And I, I didn't even really realize what that meant. But my life just sort of started to take a bit of a shift where things were becoming much more challenging in my career. I wanted to progress. And, and again, I wasn't necessarily conscious that I needed a change. I, I felt somewhere deep inside of me that I wasn't feeling fulfilled, but I still felt that I needed to find the solution within, you know, the typical career structure by, you know, whether it was looking for a promotion or looking to change corporations or companies, because, you know, the environment that I was in was becoming a little bit more toxic. I was always looking for things outside of me to find the solution to 
create that fulfillment, I guess, or, or to fill that void that was inside of me. And, you know, I attempted all of these, you know, changes that were very like surface leveled, but it just resulted in life becoming more challenging or the things that I was seeking or going after just becoming much more difficult, or um, I wasn't actually able to achieve the things that I was setting out to. And it became really frustrating for me because I'm, you know, I'm a go-getter. I'm someone who wants to keep pushing forward and growing and learning. And yet I was finding all these sort of roadblocks in my life and I, I couldn't understand why. And so I just kept pushing hard, you know, the typical A type personality, you know, you just keep forging ahead, you keep acquiring new skills or new knowledge to, to you know, ab- advance yourself or, or take those next steps, but it still left me feeling empty on the inside. Um, now I'm, I'm a giver by nature, so I'm constantly giving to others and everything in my life. And unfortunately, I, I, at that time in my life, I didn't have, or I didn't make enough space for my own self-care and my own self-practice, self-care practice. So eventually this go-getter type personality um, led to suffering from burnout. And so 15 years into my career, um, I woke up one morning and I was just no longer able to function. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating properly. Um, you know, my the the negative thought patterns that were running through my mind were to an, to a level that um, were no. It was no longer uh, functional, and it got to a point where I really needed to take a step back from everything that was going on in my life, and so I had to go on a medical leave. I was actually forced to go on a medical leave from my work because I had pushed myself so far and for so long that my physical body started to shut down. And as much as I wanted to keep going some days, it I just wasn't able to. And so when I had that period of time or when I had that space in my life to really take a step back from everything that was that I was sort of uh, uh, putting a lot of force and effort into, um, I realized that the life I had created for myself was actually a life that I no longer enjoyed, a life that no longer brought meaning and fulfillment to me. And so I I needed to take that time to really figure out who I was, what was important to me, and what I really wanted for myself um, over the next chapter of my life. Because I had been going on like this for, you know, the first 20 plus years. And I knew that if I continued in this way, that I would eventually lead to, you know, I, I could see myself having a heart attack at a very young age, just because of the level of stress that I was under, and the pressure that I was under with work. So I knew that something had to change. And so, you know, really giving myself that time and space to a heal, because there was a lot of healing that needed to take place, uh, particularly, you know, around belief systems that had been sort of ingrained and and imposed on me by my family, my culture. Um, I'm a first generation immigrant. So, you know, when when you when you immigrate to a country like I'm I'm from Canada. So when you immigrate to a country and you you come from a smaller country, um, you know, small town, your parents sort of impose all all of their own fears on their children, not consciously, of course, but they they their intention is for us to have better opportunities. But yet, because we are coming to a new land or to a new country, there's a lot of fear that surrounds that. And so that fear sort of got passed down to to us as the children. And, you know, that eventually created my own sort of limitations and in, in my own belief systems that were holding me back from doing the things that I really wanted to do or discovering who I really was in order to explore what I ultimately wanted to do instead of just following, following the typical path of, you know, going to school, getting your higher education and then coming out and sort of building your identity around uh, sort of the career that you've chosen for yourself. So it was, it was scary and it was a big move to, to really take that time away from, you know, what, 
what my the my family or the people in my life would consider to be a successful career. And it certainly was. It was a successful career, but it no longer brought me that joy that that I needed on a day-to-day basis in order for it to continue to feel successful for me. Um, and so taking that step back and really giving myself that time and space opened up the possibilities of how I can serve people in a different way, in a way that actually feels much more authentic and much more in alignment with who I am as a person rather than, again, trying to fit into the box that is expected of me from society or from family. Right. Thank you for sharing that story. And I'm sure I can relate and I'm sure so many listening can relate too as well. Um, And I feel like the pandemic really was that space for a lot of people too, because a lot of people either lost yes. jobs or they, you know, had this life, it was very life altering and kind of suddenly everybody's working from home. And a lot of people, I think, suddenly had that space to really look at things the way you were describing. And I think it's really, isn't it interesting how, you know, regardless of our, fa- our family's good intention, families fears put on us can create these blocks and limiting beliefs and negative kind of maybe mindsets or or fears that hold us back in life. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now you have extensive uh, certifications in many modalities and I did not do you justice when I introduced you. Can you share a little more about your certifications? Um, what types of modalities that you work with? And also I saw you are a you're certified in a beyond healing quantum or beyond quantum healing. Share with us yes. what that is because I've never heard of it before. Yes, absolutely. So um, I'll start off just, you know, uh, generally letting know all of the certifications. I am certified as a trainer and a master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. Um, so NLP, and that's very similar to cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, And it's essentially using tools like reframing or anchoring and having a deeper understanding of the subconscious mind and how that sort of um, helps um, navigate our psyche and and our behaviors and our belief system. So NLP is a tool that I absolutely love um, using when I work with my clients because it's, it's really getting into sort of the deeper root cause of some of the issues or those blocks that show up in our life. Um, I'm also certified in life and success coaching. So life and like business coaching, um, something called emotional freedom technique or what some people would know as tapping. Hmm. Um There's also something called time techniques, which stands for time integration for maximum empowerment. And um, actually, this is one of my favorite tools. Um, it's It's a very powerful tool that allows us to get to the root cause by using sort of like timeline regression therapy to sort of go to the root cause or go to the onset of when a belief system was formed or when an emotion was formed in sort of our timeline in our existence, whether it's, you know, this current lifetime, whether it's um, values or belief systems that are being passed down from generations, or whether it's belief systems that are coming from previous lives that we've lived, um, because all of that is stored in the subconscious mind. So time techniques uh, allows us to um, get really down to the subconscious, like it it allows us to speak to the subconscious mind and really get to the root cause of what these belief systems were and find the lessons in the learning so that we can detach ourselves and disconnect from the emotion that we hold around or that belief system that we're connected to, it sort of severs that tie in our timeline, which can be very powerful in how it starts to like shape the life that we're currently living. So it's, it's a wonderful technique. Um, And I also do hypnosis. So part of, you know, these techniques all sort of intertwine with each other. Um, And then, as you mentioned, I do have certifications as well in, um, I'm a Reiki master, so I do energy healing, um, as well as beyond quantum healing. So that technique you were mentioning earlier, which is, um, it's using hypnosis um, as a, as a sort of basis where we, you know, get to a 
a point where we're, you know, completely calm and relaxed, and we're working with the subconscious mind to give us guidance as to different time periods in our life whether again, it's this current life, whether it's a past life that we may need to go to in order to find those blocks, find the lessons, learn from those lessons so that we can heal from it in this lifetime. But the beauty with Beyond Quantum Healing is uh, although it allows us to sort of go back in time, it also allows us to have a conversation with our higher self. So for those individuals who are seeking answers, you know, maybe direction or guidance for um, different challenges that they may have in their life, Beyond Quantum Healing open, opens up that space and that sort of channel to have a direct conversation with your higher self so that you can get that guidance that you need. And lastly, um, I'm also certified in something called uh, TRE. I'm a TRE uh, provider which stands for tension trauma release exercise. And it's a, it's a somatic body-based practice that allows us to release any physical tension or trauma that actually gets trapped in the body. Because that's another thing that uh, we need to start, we need to start opening up the conversation around is that the emotions that we experience or these belief systems that we hold on to and carry, they eventually get trapped trapped in our physical body. And eventually that can lead to physical ailments or physical conditions, you know, like the cancers, the diabetes, the Alzheimer's, the, you know, the list can go on and on and on with the number of different conditions that can come as a result of, you know, holding on to these blocks or holding on to these emotions. Ah, what an so, incredible array. <laughs> yeah, my my intention was really to get an understanding of sort of all of the layers that make us human beings. I mean, we we are very special creatures. We we have a very powerful mind that can create any reality that we can imagine. We have emotions that run from, you know, high love to deeper, sadder emotions and everything in between. But we're also spiritual beings, and we have to appreciate that we are living in a physical body. So all these things that come together, they essentially are interconnected and they play on each other. And if we're looking to maybe heal the physical body, we need to understand that there are emotions or mindset or maybe like the lack of having a spiritual practice that can lead to having some of those physical conditions. Right. Such a comprehensive spectrum of modalities. I mean, like you said, they're all intertwined and we can't just address the physical body without ensuring all the other parts of us are addressed as well. And when you were talking about the um, beyond quantum healing and the hypnosis, it reminded me of that book, Many Lives, Many Masters. Um, yes. It sounded similar to that. Yes. Yes. Very similar. Yeah. Um, I love that modality. Again, it's, it, um, it really opens up that space to, um, to have that connection with our, our, our deeper parts of ourselves. Often we're looking at, or we, we seek answers from external sources or from everything outside of us when we really have to take a step back and start to reflect inwards to find that guidance and, and to find those answers because we do have the answers. We just need to sort of shut down all the noise that happens around us and, and really go inwards to find, to find those answers. Yes. Wise words. So important. And that can save your life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It definitely saved mine. Nice. I know that. <laughs> so let's get into limiting beliefs. Um, I feel like, and we were discussing this before the show, that this is something that is not fully understood or maybe, you know, there's confusion around. So what would you say is the kind of definition of a limiting belief? Yeah, so... Limiting belief is really um, a thought pattern or um, maybe an assumption that we make about ourselves or about other people or about the world around us 
that ultimately restrict our potential or our ability to achieve, say, the goals that we're looking to achieve in our life or um, to go after the things that bring us joy and bring us uh, fulfillment because we may we may not believe that uh, we're worthy of it or we deserve it. And so, you know, limiting beliefs are often, if, if we really think about or, or pay attention, start to pay attention to the thought patterns that we have and the thoughts that are constantly running around in our minds, you can quickly identify limiting beliefs if they are negative or if they're self-defeating. So if they're constantly, you know, putting you down, putting yourself down or, you know, convincing yourself to not try something because, you know, you can fill in whatever the blank is, your um, I'm not pretty enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm, you know, not successful enough. When we when we have those thought patterns, those are typical limiting beliefs. Those are the things that um, ultimately, you know, when we have these great ideas or these inspirations, or what I would call downloads from source or from the divine, when we get these brilliant ideas, if, if we take a moment to observe how our thoughts sort of start to form around those ideas, you know, whether we can accomplish them or whether we can't accomplish them. Those are signs of limiting beliefs. When we, when we start to um, hold ourselves back from pursuing whatever that idea is or whatever that um, thought was that we, you know, maybe inspired action that we wanted to take. But if all of a sudden you think, oh, well, you know, um, I might as well not do that because, you know, I'm not good enough anyways. I won't be able to um, produce, you know, um, whatever it is, the podcast or an episode or, um, you know, um a course, or, you know, I won't be able to achieve that particular um, career that I aspire for, you know, those are all signs that there's something that's deeply rooted, a fundamental belief system that you have in place that is creating all these negative thoughts, all these sort of self-defeating um, patterns and behaviors that ultimately hold you back from taking those steps forward. Right. And I think this is a, a place of confusion that I sometimes kind of run into. Would you say that also another sign of limiting, limiting beliefs is the way other people treat us? Like if let's say we keep getting treated a certain way by others, is that a reflection of limiting beliefs or is that just a reflection of other people being their issues or both? <laughs> It could be both, certainly. I mean, we we can't control how someone else behaves or how someone else thinks. But certainly, um, when we continue to see these uh, situations show up in our life, it is because what we hold in our mind becomes a sort of a mirror of the life that that we manifest or or what we actually bring to fruition. So when when we're constantly holding these negative thought patterns or these negative belief systems, we're going to manifest things in our life that are going to support that belief system. One of the one of the things that the subconscious mind does is that it will never make you a liar about something that you believe in. And so if you believe that you are not good enough or that you are not worthy, then the subconscious mind is tasked with making that belief system a reality, whether it's a positive belief system or a negative belief system. The subconscious mind won't know the difference. It just knows that it has a task and its task is to make whatever we believe in become reality in our life. And so to your point, it, it will be a reflection of what's going on inside the experiences that we face in our life and maybe not being promoted for that job will reinforce that belief system. But the reason why we're not getting promoted for that job is because we have that belief system to begin with. Because if we didn't have that belief system to begin with, we would be putting ourselves in the opportunities or in the places that will open up those opportunities so that it reinforces that we are worthy, that we are great, that we can achieve whatever it is that we want to. But 
when we continue to hold on to those patterns, our subconscious mind has no choice but to to deliver on what we actually believe because it's tasked with making us um, with making us you know these these manifestation machines ultimately or or making us a confirmation of the belief systems that we have in place. And so it will say, well, you believe, you believe that you're not worthy. Well, here you go. Here's an experience in your life. That's going to show you that you are not worthy. So it, it is a function of both what's showing up internally. But as you mentioned, we also have family, friends, and circumstances in our life that, you know, may be holding on to their own fears and their own belief systems that then they sort of project onto us or project onto the people around them. So there is a little bit of both happening at the same time. But I think when we get right with who we are as individuals and really get to um, the core of the person that we are, it's so much easier to separate ourselves from what is ours and what is someone else's. And I find that that was one of the biggest lessons for me to learn was what was my belief systems and what were the things that I valued and hold on to and what are the belief systems of, you know, my family and my friends who, again, my family I love them to to pieces, but they just grew up in a different time with different opportunities and different situations being presented to them. And so they have a different belief system that, you know, supports their life and they're comfortable with that. That doesn't necessarily mean that those belief systems are something that I can align with. And so it's on me to do the work that I need to do to internally to be able to change that so that then it can start to change how it sort of manifests and shows up in my own life. Hmm. Wow. Yes. Now, how do these limiting beliefs form in the first place? Because I'm sure throughout our lives, we were bombarded with negativity and, you know, name calling or different, you know, negative things are thrown us from people around us, but not all of them probably stick and become a limiting belief, but some do. What's the process or the reason why some kind of get stuck and limit us for long periods of time in our life and some don't. It really starts with um, our childhood experiences. You know, the, the experiences that we have between the ages of zero and seven, which is considered the imprint period, um, really do shape how we, you know, show up in the world and how we um, navigate the world. And so um, for me, I find that a lot of the times the belief, the core belief systems that are so deeply ingrained in, in, in sort of how we show up um, are either coming from that period of time from our childhood, or they're coming from past lives. And if we have not resolved them in our past lives, or uh, again, whether they're coming from, you know, previous generations that are being passed down one from one generation to the next, if they don't get resolved, then they just keep showing up as opportunities for us to grow and learn from those lessons. So, you know, when it comes to our childhood sort of period between zero and seven, it's, it's, Almost anything can create a limiting belief. Something so simple as maybe, you know, our parents, um, and and again, obviously, you know, the people in our lives do the best that they can with the resources that they can at any given time. And so this isn't to necessarily sit here and point blame at our parents. This is not what it's about. It's about recognizing that, you know, they had their own struggles and they had things that they were going through at that time. But something so simple as, you know, um, you know, if there's two children in the house and the mo- the one child wants something and the mother takes the toy away from, say, myself to give it to my sister or to my brother, that can instill a belief system that I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough to have that toy that, you know, someone else is better than me for having that toy. And that was the reason why that happened. And even though that's not the meaning behind the experience or the situation in reality, it is the meaning that the subconscious mind internalized. And so it happens once 
maybe not that big of a deal, but then it happens again and then it happens again and then it happens again in different ways and in different forms. And eventually it becomes a system, a belief system that we um, hold on to. It's a story that we end up holding on to, to say, yes, you know what? Every time this happens, it's because I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough, or I'm this, or I'm that. And it, it really started with something small, almost like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts small, but by the time it gets down to the bottom of that hill, it's this massive giant snowball that's ready to take down almost anything that comes in its way. And limiting beliefs are are very much like that. They start off small with something. More often than not, it it's very insignificant. But the way that the mind interprets things sometimes can form a belief system that um, ultimately will limit us from from moving forward. And it's really on us to you know start to look at those experiences and those situations and change the perspective around it so that. Again, we can detach from that emotion or um, that belief system that we held on to for so long and really start to progress forward, if that that makes any sense. Oh, so much sense. Yeah, that's interesting how, yeah, it's just kind of the same, the same thing kind of being reinforced and reinforced. And I suppose what you were saying earlier, what we need to look out for, like the clue that that there is a kind of stuck negative belief or limiting belief would be our thought pattern. Like what we're just aware of our thoughts and, you know, noticing things that are happening and then how we're thinking around those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if, if we have an idea of something that, um, you know, that we want to achieve or accomplish, And then if you just stop for a moment and start to observe all the thoughts that come after that initial inspiring idea, if those thoughts are empowering, then great, you're in a good position. But if they're disempowering and they're ultimately convincing you that there's no way you can achieve this or there's no even reason for you to try because you know, fill in whatever the blank is, then you know it's a sign that you have a a thought pattern or a belief system in place that um, it's ultimately limiting you. Right. And what would be some examples of these negative limiting beliefs that you've seen, you know, the people you're working with or just in general Mm -hmm. that you can hold? Yeah. So things like um, not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy, um, maybe not feeling lovable or that, um, you know, I will never feel successful or I'll never be successful or, um, you know, I'm too young or I'm too old to accomplish X, Y, Z. Um, or, you know, that, that person can achieve, you know, that level of success, but I'll never be able to do that because I'm poor, I don't have enough money, or um, it's impossible because I'm just not smart enough or pretty enough. Any of those sort of thoughts that um, really, you know, just hold us back that, that keep us stuck from moving forward. Right. And is there like a difference between, you know, we all have negative thoughts sometimes or bad days or we're not in a good state of mind between just like the regular negative thought or these negative thoughts are associated with like a core root cause limiting belief. Yeah. So, I mean, negative thought, negative thoughts in general um, will hold us back regardless because it, it carries an energy and an intention behind it. And again, as I mentioned earlier, with the way the subconscious mind works is that um, anything that we tell the subconscious mind will make a reality in our life. So if we're constantly holding on to negativity or negative thoughts, whether it's about ourselves or about others or the world around us, the, the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference when we're talking about ourselves or when we're talking about someone else. So it takes everything that we say as personally. So even if we're casting judgment on another person or we're saying something about the world around us, it will not 
decipher the difference between, oh, that's someone else versus me. It internalizes everything as, as if it's about the self. And so again, the subconscious mind is tasked with making us um, right about everything that we believe in. And so it will ultimately manifest and create that in our life. So to me, really limiting beliefs and negative thought patterns are so closely tied together that we really need to start to sort of change the script and reprogram how our mind thinks at a deeper subconscious level, because then it starts to impact those thought patterns. It starts to impact how we think whether it's about ourselves or it's about the people in our lives or the world around us, that it, it we start to see things in a more positive way rather than in a more judgmental way. But it does require shifting, shifting our perspective in order to do that. So you're saying if we, let's say there's somebody that has wronged us and we're thinking, oh, I hate that person or some really negative, strong feeling mm -hmm. internally towards that person, we're actually our internal, our subconscious is internalizing that. And you're kind of putting that negative feeling towards yourself by holding. Yes. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. It does and not distinguish the difference between ourselves and something outside of ourselves. That's an important point. So yeah. we need to guard our thoughts and our feelings very carefully because those are impacting us thinking we're Absolutely. thinking we're just feeling something towards somebody else. Oof. And how can these limiting beliefs impact? We've talked about how they impact our thoughts. How can they impact our behavior and our feelings as well? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, our, our belief systems are very closely tied to our emotions and to our behaviors. So when we have these limiting beliefs, over time, it has an impact on our emotional state of being. It, it ultimately, um, you know, can create depression, can create a lot of anxiety, uh, can can put us in a place where we feel apathy. So, you know, lack of interest, enthusiasm, or just, you know, general um, excitement in our life. Um, because we're, we're ultimately, we have these amazing ideas or these amazing inspirations to bring joy and happiness and abundance into our life. But if we're not taking the steps forward or taking the action that we need to, in order to welcome and invite those things into our life, then naturally we're going to feel more depressed, more low energy, more, um, you know, maybe even a sense of feeling lost and confused because, you know, we, we want to take action and, and steps forward, but we just feel like we're not either good enough or, or uh, smart enough to do so. And, you know, then it, it creates a little bit of resentment because we see, we, we look out into the world and we see other people achieving their dreams and we see other people accomplishing the things that they want. And, you know, it starts to build a little bit of resentment inside because you think you sit there and think, well, why am I not good enough to achieve my goals? Or why am I not worthy of achieving my goals? But it's really the thoughts and those belief systems that hold us back. It's not that we we can't achieve them. But if we don't even try, then we certainly will not be able to bring to fruition whatever it is that we're trying to achieve and accomplish in our life. So those, you know, I, I, I believe wholeheartedly, again, that everything is so interconnected that naturally, if we're holding on to these belief systems, it's, it's inevitably going to cause an imbalance in our emotional state. And then, of course, if, if we don't believe that we can accomplish something, then we'll never take the steps to actually implement it. And that's where the behavior piece comes in. We actually need to take the steps forward, we need to take action, we need to accomplish whatever those tasks are to move the goals forward. Um, and if we don't believe that we can, we'll never actually take those steps to go forward. So again, everything is so interconnected that um, by holding on to those belief systems, you we really do limit our, our behavior and the actions that we take or, or um, lack there of actions that we take. 
Right. Now, if anyone listening wants to kind of start this process of getting to this root cause limiting belief, um, and they've kind of see these clues in their lives that something's, something's up, some, you know, they're not where they want to be in life. They're, they're having these feelings and experiences. Um, what would kind of be a process or, or steps to kind of find and root out these limiting beliefs um, or the root cause limiting beliefs? So the first step is definitely to start to become aware of the thoughts. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, as we start to get these like pangs of inspiration or downloads or ideas um, or desires that we want to achieve in our life, take a step back and just start to pay attention to the thoughts that start to form immediately after you have that idea or immediately after you have that um, inspiration to create or inspiration to take that step forward, whatever the case may be. So once you become aware of those thought, those thought patterns or those thoughts that are starting to come to the service, the next step would then be to start to challenge them challenge those belief systems and ask yourself whether those beliefs are actually true. And then maybe start to find some evidence in your life of how those belief systems are true and see if there is a way that you can actually contradict or find evidence that contradicts that those belief systems are true. And, you know, a good way to do that is to start to reflect on the achievements, the accomplishments, the things that um, we have done in our life that make us feel successful or that have made us feel like, you know, we proud of ourselves because we we took that step or we accomplished that dream or accomplished that goal. When When we can reflect back on those moments, we're actually starting to contradict some of those belief systems. So it's very important to, you know, first take that step and just become aware, but then secondly, start to challenge them, start to ask questions around why do I believe this? And is this really true for me? And how can I find instances or examples in my life where maybe this is not true? And you'll start to see that when you create that list of all of the evidence that contradicts the belief system, it will really start to help you see that the belief system is is actually just a false belief system that has been, um, you know, has been ingrained in your subconscious for so long, but it doesn't actually have any validity or truth in your life because you have achieved all these other amazing things, or if you you accomplished all these other things that you set out to do. Right now, once we have kind of got to a root cause limiting belief, what would be some techniques and tools we can use to start overcoming them? Yeah. So uh, one thing that I absolutely love is um, using affirmations. Mm. So once we've sort of identified a belief system that we can then go in and start to replace that belief system with a positive affirmation. So for example, you know, if someone believes that they're not good enough or they're not worthy, that they can start to uh, reframe and and use affirmations that um, would, you know, change that language to say, you know, I am good enough and I deserve love, happiness, success, abundance, whatever it is that we're seeking. So anytime we start to have a thought that is limiting, finding ways to to reframe it or, or turn it into a positive affirmation. And the power with positive affirmations is, is, an, is in the I am statement. So the more that we can put it into that present moment, I am, more power comes into um, starting to shift that belief system at, at the subconscious, at the deeper subconscious level. Um, so absolutely, affirmations are uh, one of my go-tos. Um, we also talked about reframing. So I think reframing is an important piece to all of this, is that once we've identified the belief system is really taking that time to uh, reframe it, look for the challenges, look for ways to contradict the belief system in your life by finding evidence, again, that contradicts that belief system. 
Um, visualization is also another great tool that can help us to start to create um, sort of an identity or uh, create, um, you know, these goals and aspirations that we're seeking to to move towards. The, the more that we can hold those positive thoughts, those positive visions in our mind, Again, the subconscious is going to make us a believer of anything and everything we believe in. So if we can hold those visions strong in our mind and in our heart, then uh, we can start to overcome some of these limiting beliefs. We can start to take the steps forward that we need to, that will then convince us that, um, you know, the, the, the thoughts and the beliefs that systems that we had in place are no longer true because we've been able to take those steps forward. We've been able to achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve, but having a strong uh, vision in mind of what it is that you're going after is really what's going to keep you moving forward. And it's, it's also going to help the subconscious mind bring it into life bring that into your life and, and really uh, help you manifest those goals and those, those dreams that we all have for ourselves. Right. Um, and then I would say, you know, mindfulness practice also anything that allows you to sort of connect with yourself and get centered and really get to the, the root of who you are will help you start to see that a lot of these beliefs that we've been conditioned to have, don't actually resonate with us and who we are at the core. Right. And would you say these limiting beliefs can be at some point working through these processes? Can they be completely removed or can they only be transformed kind of into more positive thoughts and, and we'll always kind of have to work on them and be mindful of them as an ongoing process? Yeah, I think... I think we can heal from our limiting beliefs. However, from the belief systems that we may have in place up until this point and up until this, because um, we're, we're sort of always um, leveling up, if you would, right? And I think that, you know, we can do the work to heal from the experiences that we've had up until this point, and we can, you know, completely transform our lives. However, we have to recognize that part of the human condition has been for so long that, you know, we do have all these limiting um, beliefs or we have these things that, you know, hold us back that we're always going to have to continuously be working on them. We're always going to have to be mindful of, you know, our thought pattern and our, our, um, our behaviors as we continue to progress because new things are going to show up. So we may have healed from a belief system that, you know, we're worthy or not worthy or not good enough to this level, to the level that we're at today. But when we take that next step forward, we're going to be presented with new challenges. We're going to be presented with new obstacles in our life that may bring to surface some belief systems again, that we'll then have to face and look, you know, head on and um, ultimately overcome in order to get to the next level. And then when we get to that next level, there will be a new set of belief systems that will come again. And we just have to keep going through that process. But I, I think that the, the beauty is once you've learned the tools the first time around, then you always have them with you so that as you continue to level up and as you continue to progress and grow, that you have those tools with you that you can quickly move, move through them, move through those limitations rather than being stuck in them, which so many of us are today because we just don't know, um, A, we don't know how to do things differently and B, we haven't been taught some of these tools that are available to us to help break down some of these belief systems and actually create um, the detachment that we need so we can move forward. Right. That makes so much sense. It's this lifelong mindfulness practice. Yes. And like you said, we could overcome a lot of the limiting beliefs we had as children and get to this point, but we take that next step. There's new challenges. But yes. now we have these tools where we can now identify things quicker and we can go through this process with more ease and kind of clear these things and be mindful of them as they come instead of just like letting them 
absorb into us and turn into another roadblock or stuck limiting belief. Or take control of our life, really, because that so many of us, it is taking control of our life and not allowing us to really live a life the way we want to live. Absolutely. Now, how? what are some clues and how can we determine um, if we have started to overcome, if we're working on overcoming a limiting belief and transforming it, what are some clues to look for um, to, to kind of see if we're overcoming it? Yes, yes, that's a great question. Um, so when we start to feel maybe an increase in our confidence level, um, as we overcome some of our limiting beliefs, we actually start to notice that our confidence and our self-esteem sort of has a little bit of a, a, a pickup or a little pep in our step. Um, we feel much more capable. We feel much more worthy or deserving or, um, you know, then the negative self-talk starts to be replaced with positive self-talk. So when you have that idea or that inspiration to, you know, create whatever it is that you're looking to create, then, you know, having that um, sort of positive reinforcement to say, no, you can do this, you know, just one step at a time, we'll figure this out, you know, we, we know where we're going, or we know what we want to achieve. And it's just a matter of taking one step at a time so that we can get where we're going. You know, those those types of thoughts are much more empowering than, you know, having those thoughts that say, well, no, I can never accomplish that, or I can never do that. So, you know, when, when we start to notice that the thought patterns that we have are much more supportive of our dreams or much more supportive of um, the things that we want to create, that's a great sign that, you know, you're starting to overcome some of those limiting beliefs. Um, being more willing to take risks. That's another one that, um, you know, in order for us to be open to new experiences and to opportunities and to welcome and invite new exciting opportunities into our life, we we really need to not be afraid to take to take those steps forward or not not be afraid to uh, to fail. Really, I mean, we have this idea in in our society that. Um, failure is a bad thing. And, you know, I would actually challenge people to reframe the even the word failure, that there is no such thing as failure, that each and every time that we're trying something, even if it doesn't go exactly as we planned, it is an opportunity for us to grow. It's an opportunity for us to learn from the experience and to come out of it and regroup and then try again with everything that we've just learned and all of those beautiful lessons that we acquired from that first time that we did whatever it is we were trying or accomplishing, but there's really no such thing as failure. It's just feedback. It's just um, lessons that we can take from what we've attempted so that we can go back and do it again the second time and do it better the second time. Yes. Right. So um the other thing is just overall, um, you will notice an improved like mental and emotional well-being. You'll you'll notice a reduction in stress levels, anxiety, um, maybe not being as depressed, um, finding like being much more grateful, finding more gratitude for the smaller things in your life rather than again always holding on to um those negative things or the negative experiences. Right. Oh, thank you for sharing those. Um, now, what other types of therapy, coaching, and other forms of modalities will be can be useful in recognizing, overcoming, and working to um, kind of remove these root cause limiting beliefs? Yeah. So, uh, I would definitely say uh, NLP. Um, NLP inspired coaching would be um, a great sort of um, therapy or tool that that someone can can seek in order to help them with these um, limiting beliefs. Um, also, your traditional um, therapy, I would say, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy is another um, great style of therapy that helps us really get to the root cause of some of these belief systems. Um, 
any mindfulness-based practices, anything that allows us to start to turn our attention inwards rather than being focused on all of the external things around us. Um, and of course, you know, your typical personal development, personal growth retreats or workshops, anything that really um, starts to help you to shift your perspective. Um, and then, of course, there's a ton of books and, you know, courses and resources online that that one can look to to um, really help them identify what these belief systems are and, and find ways to start to break down those belief systems so that they can ultimately, you know, take those steps and uh, steps forward in their life. Mm. And for those that don't know briefly, what is NLP? So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and um, it is it's similar to cognitive behavioral therapy, where it it gives you a, a deep understanding of the subconscious and the conscious mind and how they sort of play on each other. Um, and then with NLP style coaching, there's specific tools that the coach can leverage, like reframing, like anchoring. Anchoring is a wonderful tool that helps us to replace um, certain emotions, let's say sadness or anger. It actually helps us to replace those emotions with more positive emotions um, by using sort of a, a trigger point on our body or an anchoring point on our body. So for example, you know, um, individuals who are afraid of like, say, public speaking, um, we can have a trigger point on our body, which would could be like used as our knuckle, where um, we can anchor the the feeling of confidence, of um, you know, positive self esteem, of um, feeling like intelligent and feeling you know like a magnetic person. That then, when that individual when is behind stage, when the nerves start to sort of come up just before they get on stage, they can actually press down on that anchor in their body and they can completely change their state of being. So they can move away from that fear of the public speaking into that place where they feel confident, where they feel like they're ready to take on the world. So uh, NLP has a variety of tools that that really help to start to shift that perspective and help us move away from, um, you know, those belief systems and and help us move into a place where where it's much more empowering for ourselves and much more supportive of our dreams and our aspirations. Oh, sounds incredible. Um, now you co-authored a book as well. Can you share with us a little bit um, about your book? Yeah, so I uh, just recently wrote a book with my sister, Ruth, um, and it's called Resilience Despite Rigor. Uh, so we're covering boldly from adversity. Rigor is a great and, word, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. Rigor is a great word not used very often, by the way. Yes, yes, <laughs> it is. And we really wanted to, to, to highlight that because I think it is very important. Um, and really, the book is about uh, developing mental toughness. Um, and the ability to bounce back from adversity, because I mean, we all face challenges in our life. And um, often we think that, you know, we're alone, or we're the only ones experiencing this. But, you know, that's a misconception, we all have challenges. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned, the book is really just to help people develop the, the mental toughness so that they can overcome those challenges, they can overcome those hardships that we face in life. Um, but it's really to understand that, you know, we're going to continue to be faced with challenges and be faced with um, you know, difficult experiences, as long as you have um, a, a way of shifting your perspective or shifting the way you're looking at the challenges, so that you're much more open to the lessons and the opportunities that it, these challenges are presenting in our lives, then it, it makes it so much, I'm going to say easier as a it's a loose term, but it makes it easier for us to overcome the challenges because we can take that step back and say, well, what is this trying to teach me? Or what is this experience trying to show me about myself or about the world around me that I need to either change or I need to grow and uh, evolve from? So it, it is an opportunity for um 
you know, someone to develop, you know, the, the, the real sort of resilience that you need um, in, in our mind to be able to keep pushing forward in life, despite, despite those challenges that we face. Oh, wonderful. Um, And that reminds me, I mean, that made me think it's so true because a lot of times we think, well, once I reach this level in life, (laughs) you know, all these problems will be gone and I'll be at this new high level where, you know, there won't be all these problems, but like you said, there'll be new challenges and new things overcome. But if we have the right tools at that point, we'll be able to get through them better. Yes, exactly. Now, for those who want to contact you, where can we find you? And do you have any other great resources that we can all check out? Yes, absolutely. So uh, you can find me at awakenharmony.ca. Um, and I do have an incredible workbook, actually, that I'm sharing with uh, with my community and, and other communities on how to identify limiting beliefs. And so I would be happy to to share that with your community and hopefully it can it can give them, you know, a little tool to start to, you know, go inwards and start to observe what's showing up in life for them and how this is ultimately a deeper rooted limiting belief and and ultimately starts to show them how they can reframe that in their own life so that they can start to set themselves up for, you know, making those, uh, taking those steps uh, forward that they need to. Beautiful. Thank you for this workbook. I will post links below to her website and to the workbook and any other links she has for social media, etc. So you can all check all that out. Before we wrap it up, do you have any final thoughts to share on the importance of overcoming our limiting beliefs? Absolutely. It is um, once, once you take the, that, leap of faith and you are committed to, you know, uh, in embarking on this journey of really healing our, our, our mind from all of these conditions and all of these programs that we've been subjected to, we really start to unlock the true power that is within us and, um, the true potential that we all have. We are incredible creators incredible creatures that can create anything we want and anything we seek in our life. Um, So long as we don't limit ourselves and don't hold ourselves back from taking those steps that we need to, to move forward. So, you know, I encourage people all the time to do the deep inner work that we all need to do in order to recognize our own greatness, to recognize the power that we truly have that lies within us. Because once we, once we can align with that power, once we can align with um, knowing that we are the creator, then we can actually become unstoppable and nothing can hold us back. And even though we face those limiting beliefs, as we continue to level up, when you revert back to that space or that place inside that you know is your guiding compass, then you know you can continue to achieve and break through those limitations and break through those barriers and continue to achieve, you know, the next level goals that you've set for yourself. But it is so important to do that deep inner work. And um, another thing that people believe is that it has to be difficult doing the deep inner work. And I challenge people to, to, um, really look at um, alternative options that um, can show you that it doesn't have to be so challenging. There are tech tools and techniques out there that um, don't ha- you don't have to relive the experience or relive the emotions in order to overcome them. You don't have to keep telling your same story over and over and over again and reliving that over and over again uh, in order to release it. So there are incredible tools out there that can really help us to break down those blocks. And I really encourage people to um, be courageous enough to embark on that journey, because I promise you once, once you do, and you come out of it on the other side, life is going to look so different and it will be um, filled with so much more joy and, and love that um, you won't, actually recognize yourself or or your life anymore because it it will completely transform Mm, beautiful well thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your wisdom and tools 
to help us all identify and shift our limiting beliefs. I really appreciate all the work you're doing. Thank you for all the work you're doing on with your book and all these other um um your website and uh helping all your clients as well shift their lives. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about your body, the better you're able to stay healthy and prevent disease. And if you like this video, please like it and share with others. This information could really help someone you may know. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to be sure you don't miss out on our future shows. And I will see you all next Wednesday on the next episode of Discovering True Health. Thank you.